Wow, this isn't a lot of dead wood on the ground here. Well, that's not too unusual. A lot of forests are full of dead wood, but right here it seems like there's almost more trees on the ground than there are still standing, and it kind of makes you wonder, how come all these trees are dead? Well, in today's episode, we're gonna be looking at this special tree that comes from the American West, and we're gonna be talking about the habitats that it lives in, a little bit about its interesting adaptations to fire, and we're gonna be talking about some threats that it faces today from human-caused climate change. Join me, and we're gonna get out in the woods and take a look at this tree. <laughs> I'm here in the North Cascades with my friend, the lodgepole pine tree. Now lodgepole pines often can be found forming their own forest, surrounded by others of their kind. So once you identify one, it's often very easy to find other lodgepole pine trees. That's, That's not, not a lodgepole lodge pine. pine! What was that? That, that tree, tree you're standing, you're standing next, next to is a Douglas fir, not a lodgepole. Um, well, clearly, we need to actually go back and take a look at how do you actually identify a lodgepole pine tree compared to some of the other trees that you might find up here. Let's take a look at that. So how do I identify a lodgepole pine tree? Well, first of all, a lot of people already know this, but pines have needle-like leaves. Pine needles, everybody knows that. But a lot of other trees do as well. So how do you tell that it's a pine needle versus another type of conifer? Well, pines actually have their needles grouped up in a bundle. Those bundles are called fascicles. And in this little drawing graphic right here, you can see this little place here where the needles are attached at the bottom. And then I've got two needles. Logical pines have two needles in that same fascicle or bundle. Now, they're one of the very few trees in Western North America that only has two needles. In addition to that, with lodgepole pines, the needles are going to be twisted around almost a full 180 degrees by the middle. They're kind of contorted. Um, so that'll help you identify the needles on these trees. Now for the tree themselves, they're going to be very tall and straight in our variety of lodgepole. Oftentimes they're going to have this really beautiful bark that kind of looks like flaky cornflakes coming off of the tree. Sometimes a gray color, sometimes almost a bright orange. Um, so very beautiful with that. Uh, the trees are going to kind of have no branches on the bottom as they get older, and they're going to be pretty narrow, tiny branches on the top, even on mature trees. The last thing is going to be the pine cones. They're going to be woody, which means they're kind of hard, and they're armed. That means there's little sharp barbs on the outside of the scales of those cones that are kind of difficult to step on if you're barefoot. Uh, the cones are going to be kind of egg-shaped and about the size of a golf ball, so pretty small. Let's get back out into the forest and check out our tree in the wild. I am now here with my real friend, the lodgepole pine tree. Now, while it is true that sometimes other trees will be growing in the same forests as lodgepole pines, it's also not uncommon for lodgepole pines to be the only trees in their forests. They like to grow together. And sometimes you'll even see them growing really close together in very dense groves, kind of like the one we have behind me here. Now, one of the reasons that lodgepole pines can do this is because oftentimes other trees have a hard time competing in the environments they can live in. Pine trees in general, and lodgepole pines in particular, do very well at living in arid environments, places that are pretty dry, and they can also do very well in cold environments. Some of the places that lodgepole pines grow get down to about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, negative nine degrees Celsius during the growing season. That's pretty chilly. One thing that goes with living in arid environments, or those dry places, is going to be that these trees sometimes have to contend with fire. Fire often does happen in places where it is dry. Let's take a look at some of the really interesting adaptations that lodgepole pines have to surviving fire disturbances. The first thing you need to know is that lodgepole pines depend on fire for their survival. At least this variety here does in the Pacific Northwest. Lodgepole pines don't naturally live for a super long time. After about 80 years, other species, like this Douglas fir right here, start getting taller than them and shading them out, which means they're gonna die because of too much competition. Without frequent fire knocking down the competition, lodgepole pines don't stand much of a chance. They need a lot of light to survive. Now, 
Trees like the Douglas fir respond to fire by having very thick fire resistant bark, trying to protect themselves from the fire as it comes through. But lodgepoles take a very different approach. Let's take a look at that. So the way that lodgepole pines are adapted to fire is, wait for it, they burn really, really well. So when a fire comes through a forest of lodgepoles, they go up in smoke and everything around them goes up in smoke too because they burn so well and they burn so hot that all the other trees catch fire and everybody dies together. Which doesn't sound like a great survival strategy until you remember that the point of life is not actually survival, it's reproduction. So as long as the tree can reproduce before it dies, it has succeeded. And that is where the lodgepole survival strategy is so genius. And we have to remember these really cute cones that the lodgepole pine has. And you'll notice on this branch here, even though this tree has been dead for a while, there's still cones all over it. And in fact, those cones will be retained on the tree, even when the tree is alive. They don't generally fall to the ground on our current variety that we're talking about here. These cones are what are called serotonous. That basically means that the scales are held together by a sticky resin that holds those together until it gets hot and melts. And that melting usually doesn't occur until a fire happens. So the genius part of this is that those cones and the seeds are safe on the tree until a big fire goes through. And when that fire goes through, everything else is dead, which means that when those seeds come out, they're the only thing left in the forest and they don't have to compete with anybody for the nice mineral rich soil that is left over after the fire. Super awesome survival strategy in kind of a going out with a bang kind of way. In addition to being a super cool tree with an awesome fire adaptation, lodgepole pines have also been favored throughout human history as a source of materials and as food. Indigenous people living in the area around the Rocky Mountains have since time immemorial favored this tree as the best one to construct teepee poles out of because of its light weight and how skinny and long it is. In addition to that, the inner bark has been used for thousands of years as a starvation food as it provides sustenance when a lot of things are unreachable. Since European colonization of North America, they have also been favored as a prime building material for log cabins even up until today. Unfortunately, human management of this tree since colonization has gone downhill and there's some threats that lodgepole pines now face as a result of human management strategies. The first step in the problems that are facing modern lodgepole pine trees is fire suppression. Indigenous nations of North America often will use fire as a management tool to keep their forests healthy. Now, the nations that have arisen from European cultures have practiced the opposite over the last century or two. And so what we have now is all of the natural fires that would have been replacing forests or at least killing the older and weaker trees haven't happened. And so what we get is we get a forest that's unusually dense, something that has a lot of trees in a small space that are competing with each other for resources. One effect of this is that when you get a fire nowadays, it's often a lot bigger because there's a lot more fuel to burn. But another effect is because all of those trees are competing for resources, they have a harder time getting the resources they need and fighting off pathogens. Enter the mountain pine beetle. The mountain pine beetle is an insect which survives by burrowing into the bark of pine trees like the lodgepole pine and laying its eggs there. When the larvae emerge from the eggs, they start eating the cambium layer of the tree, which is the living tissue of the tree, which of course is not good for the tree. Often a whole lot of beetles will attack one tree and the larva will then kill the tree. Now, the lodgepole pine tree is not defenseless against this. These are after all natural pathogens. These trees have lived with them for millions and millions of years. Oftentimes with a healthy lodgepole pine tree, when the beetles attack, they'll excrete their sap and that will drown the beetles. Unfortunately, this only works if the tree is strong enough and has enough water to put out enough sap to kill those beetles. In modern times, as a result of the overcrowding from fire suppression, as well as climate change, making the climate hotter and warmer in a lot of the places that this tree grows, the mountain pine beetles are getting the upper hand and are able to kill huge swaths of lodgepole forest. Now, although death by insect seems a little bit grim of a future for this tree, there are solutions to help rebalance the relationship of the lodgepole pine with the mountain pine beetle. 
One thing that we can do is reintroduce controlled burns into lodgepole pine ecosystems to help reduce the amount of trees and the amount of competition that they're facing and bring these ecosystems back into a more natural state with fire. Another thing we can do is work on tackling the big problem of climate change by reducing our reliance on fossil fuels and other things which emit the greenhouse gases responsible for global warming. By doing these things, we can make sure that these forests and forests all over the world are healthier for generations to come. The next time you're out in the forest, take a look around and see if you can find a lodgepole pine tree. And remember how this tree connects you with the rest of the natural world. Hi everybody. If you enjoy learning about trees and you want to help this page grow a little bit, you can get the chance to learn about a lot more trees and help this page grow by subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much.